On 23rd August 2023, something incredible happened. Chandrayaan-3, India's third mission to the moon, descended toward a place no spacecraft had ever reached before, the lunar south pole. With that successful soft landing, India joined a small club of nations to land on the moon. The world applauded, headlines celebrated the precision, the resilience, and the engineering leap forward. During its brief mission window, Chandrayaan-3 exceeded expectations, uncovering details about the moon that no other lander had revealed before. On the surface, it seemed like a complete success. But behind the applause lingered a question scientists had been asking for years. The moon's south pole isn't just another landing site. It's a place of extremes, craters that haven't seen sunlight in billions of years, surfaces that dip to temperatures colder than Pluto, and terrain that challenges even the most advanced technology. And within these dark craters may lie something incredibly important not just for science, but for the future of human exploration. Water ice First hinted at by India's own Chandrayaan-1 mission in 2008, the presence of water on the moon changed the way we thought about our closest, celestial neighbor. If ice truly exists there, it could one day sustain lunar habitats, fuel rockets, and enable deeper space missions. Chandrayaan-3 was built to get us closer to the answer than ever before. It had the tools, it had the experience of past missions behind it, and it had a very specific question in its sights. One that's quietly become one of the biggest in lunar science. Is there really water ice on the moon's surface? But the answer turned out to be more complicated than anyone expected. To understand how India reached this remarkable turning point and what secrets Chandrayaan-3 uncovered, we need to trace the quiet beginnings of its lunar journey. It's a story of ambition, setbacks, persistence, and a long-lasting mystery hidden in the moon's shadows. It all began in 2008 when India launched its first lunar mission, Chandrayaan-1. This mission made a discovery that changed everything. It found signs of hydration on the moon. Until then, the moon was thought to be bone dry. This finding shook the global scientific community and shifted the focus of lunar research. Suddenly, the dusty, barren moon had become a place of renewed interest, especially its south pole, where water ice might be hidden in permanently shadowed craters. Fast forward to 2019, India returned with Chandrayaan-2, this time aiming to do more. It carried an orbiter, a lander, and a rover with the goal of soft landing near the moon's south pole. But just minutes before touchdown, the Vikram lander lost control and crashed. It was a heartbreaking moment, yet all was not lost. The orbiter survived and continued to function flawlessly sending back high-resolution data and keeping the mission scientifically alive. India took this setback in stride, lessons were learned, designs were improved, and four years later, in 2023, Chandrayaan-3 rose from the ashes of its predecessor. This time, there was no orbiter. The mission had one clear objective, to land successfully and explore the moon's south pole. The spacecraft had two key parts, the Vikram lander, weighing about 1,750 kilograms, carried scientific instruments to measure heat, seismic activity, and the surface's physical properties. Nestled inside it was the Pregyan rover, a small, six-wheeled, solar-powered explorer weighing just 26 kilograms. After a 40-day journey through space, Chandrayaan-3 finally reached the moon on August 23, 2023. Its Vikram lander gently touched down near 69 degrees south latitude and 32 degrees east longitude, a site that would later be named Shiv Shakti Point. This historic landing made India the first country to reach the lunar south pole region. But success didn't come easy. These coordinates posed some of the most extreme challenges any lunar mission had ever faced. 
The first challenge was the terrain. The moon's south pole is incredibly rugged, marked by towering mountains, deep trenches, and craters so vast that they stretch for kilometers. Finding a flat, stable spot for landing here is extremely challenging. Every meter is a gamble. The second obstacle was the lack of sunlight. Unlike other regions on the moon, the South Pole receives very little light. The sun hovers low on the horizon, casting long shadows and leaving parts of the surface in near-permanent darkness. Some craters haven't seen sunlight in over a billion years. This made it difficult to rely on solar panels for power and posed serious risks for surface operations. Finally, there was the cold. During the lunar night, which lasts about 14 Earth days, temperatures can plummet to negative 230 degrees Celsius or negative 382 degrees Fahrenheit. Such extreme cold can freeze electronic systems and cripple instruments, making survival nearly impossible without significant thermal protection. That's why Chandrayaan-3 was designed to operate during just one lunar daylight period, about 14 Earth days, when the sun is up and the lander and rover could remain powered and warm. And in that brief window, India made the most of it, gathering crucial data, conducting scientific experiments, and making discoveries that brought the world one step closer to understanding the moon's most mysterious region. Chandrayaan 3's trail of discoveries began not on the surface, but just above it. The moon has a very thin atmosphere, so sparse that it's technically called an exosphere. It's almost a vacuum. To put it in perspective, the pressure of the lunar exosphere is about 0.3 nanopascals. That's about a trillion times thinner than the Earth's atmosphere at sea level. Floating above this exosphere is an even more elusive layer, the lunar ionosphere. This is a faint shell of charged particles created when sunlight strikes atoms in the exosphere and knocks electrons loose, forming a thin layer of plasma. For the first time in history, instruments aboard the Vikram lander measured both the density and temperature of this lunar ionosphere, especially near the moon's south pole. The results were fascinating. The ionosphere was found to be relatively sparse, with plasma densities ranging from 5 million to 30 million electrons per cubic meter. What's more, this density wasn't constant. It changed throughout the lunar day, affected by the shifting angle and intensity of sunlight. Why does this matter? Because the density of an ionosphere plays a critical role in radio communication. On Earth, a dense ionosphere can delay or distort signals, but the Moon's sparse plasma layer suggests that such delays would be minimal, an encouraging sign for future human missions. In simple terms, if astronauts ever set up a base near the lunar south pole, they could likely rely on stable transmission and navigation systems, free from significant interference caused by the ionosphere. Once the Vikram lander had safely touched down, it was time for Pragyan, India's first lunar rover, to make its move. Rolling down a ramp onto the dusty terrain, the six-wheeled rover began its historic journey across the moon's south polar region. Over the next few days, it covered nearly 100 meters, carefully navigating the rugged landscape. At one point, it even detected and avoided a four-meter-wide crater using its autonomous hazard detection system. Among Pregian's scientific instruments was a compact but powerful tool called LIBS, short for Laser-Induced Breakdown Spectroscope. It didn't look like much, about the size of a toaster, but what it did was groundbreaking. Here's how it works. Pregian rolled up to an untouched patch of lunar soil and fired a high-energy laser pulse into it. That laser blast instantly vaporized a tiny speck of the regolith, turning it into a glowing cloud of plasma, a soup of superheated ionized atoms. Now here's the clever part. When elements are in plasma form, they emit light at specific wavelengths, like a unique chemical fingerprint. Libs analyzed that glowing light and broke it down into a spectrum. And there it was, 
a clear spectral signature of sulfur, not just a hint or possibility, a direct detection confirmed right there on the moon's surface. This was a first in lunar exploration. No rover had ever detected sulfur in situ before. But this discovery sparked more than just excitement. It raised important scientific questions. Sulfur is a volatile element, meaning it can turn into a gas at high temperatures. On Earth, sulfur is commonly linked to volcanic activity, so its presence near the moon's south pole hints that this region may have once experienced volcanic processes. Perhaps magma once flowed beneath the surface here, or sulfur-rich gases vented out in ancient eruptions. Besides sulfur, the other chemical elements detected in the lunar soil were aluminum, calcium, iron, silicon, titanium, chromium, and oxygen. Beneath the moon's surface, Chandrayaan-3 revealed further surprises. The CHAS-TE probe, which stands for the Chandra Surface Thermophysical Experiment, and was equipped with 10 temperature sensors, measured extreme surface temperatures, reaching around 82 degrees Celsius during the lunar day. But just two centimeters below the surface, the temperature plummeted by 60 to 70 degrees Celsius. This highlighted that the moon's topsoil is an incredibly effective thermal insulator. This steep temperature gradient is vital, not only for understanding the moon's natural environment, but also for planning future human habitats, where protection from extreme heat, freezing cold, and harmful radiation will be essential. Chandrayaan-3 didn't just explore the moon's surface, it listened to what was happening beneath it. For the first time in history, seismic measurements were taken at the moon's south pole. Thanks to a sophisticated instrument on board the Vikram lander called the ILSA, short for Instrument for Lunar Seismic Activity. Over the course of the mission, ILSA recorded more than 250 seismic events, and about 50 of them were identified as natural moonquakes. These subtle tremors revealed something fascinating. The moon's interior is more complex and layered than we once believed. While the first seismic data from the moon came from the Apollo missions between 1969 and 1977, those measurements were limited to equatorial regions. Chandrayaan's three data marks the first time we peered into the moon's inner structure at its southern high latitudes, a region that had never been studied this way before. As if the discoveries weren't enough, Chandrayaan 3's landing site turned out to be a geological treasure trove in its own right. The site was found to lie on ancient lunar terrain, estimated to be 3.7 billion years old. That makes it nearly as old as the earliest signs of life on Earth, placing it in a cosmic era when our planet and the moon were both undergoing dramatic transformations. But there was more beneath the surface, literally. Through detailed topographic mapping and imaging, scientists discovered that Chandrayaan-3 had landed within the remnants of an old, buried impact crater. Over billions of years, this crater had been filled in by layers of lunar dust, scattered boulders, and debris from countless meteorite impacts, slowly erasing its visible edges. While no longer obvious to the eye, the crater's buried structure still shapes the surrounding landscape influencing the patterns of rocks and soil in the area. Despite all the groundbreaking discoveries, one elusive target remained just out of reach, water ice. After the detection of hydroxyl ions and water-bearing molecules near the moon's poles by Chandrayaan-1 in 2008, scientists spent a decade analyzing that data. And by 2018, a landmark study identified three distinct spectral signatures, confirming the presence of surface water ice in the moon's polar regions. Naturally, hopes were high that Chandrayaan-3, landing much closer to the South Pole than any previous mission, would provide direct visual evidence of that ice. But it didn't. Like many lunar missions before it, Pregyan found no trace of exposed water ice on the surface. Its instruments were capable of detecting hydrogen, a key component of water, but no strong signals were observed. It raises a new question. If Chandrayaan-1 confirmed water ice, 
why didn't Chandrayaan-3 see any of it? There are two likely explanations. First, it's possible that Chandrayaan-3 simply didn't land in the right spot. The 2018 study showed that lunar ice is patchily distributed. At the South Pole, most of the confirmed ice is concentrated inside permanently shadowed craters, where sunlight never reaches and temperatures remain extremely low. The Vikram lander, however, touched down in a sunlit area, and while Pregyan approached the edge of a shallow crater, it never entered its shadowed zone. Quite simply, there may have been no ice at the landing site. The second explanation comes from John Ray and Three's own findings. The Chess TE instrument recorded a sharp temperature drop of 70 degrees Celsius, just 8 centimeters below the surface, plunging from a blistering 60 degrees Celsius to negative 10 degrees Celsius. This suggests that lunar soil is a poor conductor of heat, effectively insulating what lies beneath. This means that any ice present might be buried too deep for Chandrayaan 3's instruments to detect. The ice could very well be there, just hidden beneath layers of regolith, safe from the harsh heat of the lunar day. In the end, while Chandrayaan 3 didn't find water ice, it didn't disprove its existence either. Instead, it highlighted how challenging the search really is, and why future missions will need to dig deeper venture into permanently shadowed regions, and perhaps even bring drills and advanced subsurface probes to uncover one of the moon's most precious hidden resources. Even with an active window of just 14 Earth days, Chandrayaan-3 managed to leave an indelible mark, not only on the moon's surface, but on human history itself. We often look to the skies to explore the universe, but sometimes the greatest discoveries happen inside the mind. When you learn, question, and understand the laws that shape everything around you. And if that spirit of discovery excites you, if you ever wished you could learn science the way scientists actually think, you're going to love Brilliant. The sponsor of this video, Brilliant is a learning app that helps you become a better thinker and problem solver through thousands of visual, interactive lessons in math, science, programming, data, and even AI. But what makes it truly special is how you learn. Instead of watching lectures, you actually play with ideas, exploring concepts, building intuition, and learning by doing. It's a hand-on approach proven to be six times more effective than passive videos. Their science courses are some of the best I've seen. You can literally tinker with circuits experiment with gears, or explore the physics that power rockets and rovers, all through beautifully designed challenges crafted by experts from Stanford, MIT, and Caltech. It's science the way it was meant to be, felt, not memorized. So if you're ready to keep that curiosity alive and rediscover the joy of learning, go to brilliant.org forward slash the secrets of the universe also given in the description, or scan this QR code. Brilliant's also given our viewers 20% off the annual premium subscription, which gives you unlimited daily access to everything on Brilliant. And if you know someone who'd love exploring the universe of ideas, a friend, a student, or a curious mind in your family, Brilliant also makes for a truly thoughtful gift because few things are more meaningful than inspiring someone's curiosity.